How's it going beautiful people? Today I have a very special episode for you guys when we talk about what are the best ways to save cash when we're going out on medical school interviews. There's no doubt in my mind that going out to interviews is incredibly, incredibly expensive. Most medical school interviews are in a state where it's really far away from where you are. If you're lucky, if you're one of those few lucky people that only interview at schools in your hometown or in your home state, you guys don't have to spend a lot. But for the general people that actually go out and out on interviews we have to spend a lot of money traveling a lot of money on lodging to even attend those interviews so today as your trusty neighborhood friend i'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to make the most out of your money and i'm going to be sharing my personal ways that i save money and some other tips and tricks i've come across on the interview trail and even online that people have done to save money. Now, with that being said, I only want you guys to follow these tips and tricks if you guys are comfortable with it. Some of them I wasn't even comfortable with and I did not follow through with, but they do save you money. Some of them, someone might feel uncomfortable doing a certain thing. So don't take it as law, okay? Just do what you're comfortable with we want you guys to save money, but we are, I also want you guys to feel good on your skin. I want you guys to feel safe. So only do the things that you are, as I've said again, are comfortable with. So we're going to be talking about three things when it comes to going to medical school interviews. One is transportation. I'm going to split that down into actually going to the state or location where the interview is at and also traveling around town the day before, the day after, or any time uh, when you're traveling within the surroundings of the medical school and how you can save money on those two different ways. The other two things we're gonna be focusing on is lodging and food. And hopefully there are some tricks you can do to save money there as well. So first, let's talk about long distance traveling. So the traditional way that most of us go is by airplanes right but let's say let's say the interview that you have scheduled is within five or six hours driving distance so it's usually an adjacent state or an or to a, a like a state after an adjacent state that only takes about five or six hours to drive now if you have a reliable car you can save a lot of money especially if it has good gas economy on traveling to those destinations by car yes it does take a lot longer than planes but the average plane ticket costs around three to four hundred dollars but let's say you have a car that goes 25 miles per gallon it might only cost you maybe fifty dollars to travel one way and $50 back. So that's a hundred dollars. You're still saving two to three hundred dollars traveling there. Now let's say you have a car and you don't want to drive. You don't want to drive because your car is not reliable or you're going to get really tired. It's not worth it for you. Another option that you can take is taking a bus like the Greyhound bus. A lot of people actually do use Greyhound buses to get to interviews in adjacent states and a lot of people don't feel comfortable doing Greyhound buses but it's the same way that you're gonna save money by actually driving to the destinations. Usually costs around 25 to $50 back and forth. And one really good thing about Greyhound is that not only is it a reliable brand, be careful when you're choosing the brands to use, but, uh, the brand bus companies that you use to travel, but Greyhound offers you carry-on, it offers you checked baggage if you want checked baggage, it gives you free Wi-Fi on the bus, and also lots of leg room. Like I've used the Greyhound bus before, not for interviews, traveling to interviews, but I have used it in my childhood to um, go to a destination. And they're actually very comfortable, very safe. And I, I felt at home in a Greyhound bus. So you can always count on that. So without, if you don't want to travel by air, then bus and car are really good options. So what about those of you who have interviews on states much farther than six hours away how are we gonna save money 
there. Well, I have some really good tips for you there as well. So the first thing you can do is you can utilize cheap airlines, but I do recommend practicing caution here because cheap airlines tend to have additional fees that they often don't advertise, but then they end up charging for it. And then you see that the price that you pay for is actually equivalent if you use the regular airline. So be wary for those because let's give an example. So Spirit Airlines is a very cheap, very cost effective airline. You can go from Atlanta to Detroit for only about 80 bucks. Super, super cheap because the closest other main airline is Delta here that usually costs around $400 on busy times. So 80 bucks, it sounds so, so good. And it is worth it at that point because Spirit does have extra charges for carry-on luggage. I think it's $30 one way. So it'll be an extra $60 back and forth. 80 plus 60 is $140. You're still saving money there. Much better than Delta at $400. So that's when I do recommend do using a cheap airline where you know you're going to get a huge bang for your buck from a regular airline. However, Sometimes, like especially when I booked my trip to Tampa, I saw that the prices were about the same. You saved probably maybe like $20 more on Spirit. At that point, I don't recommend using a cheap airline. Use a general one, you get a lot more amenities. You can use Wi-Fi, you can do a bunch of other things. So be wary when choosing lower cost, cheaper airlines, but they do can benefit you if you play your cards right. So let's say there are no cheap airlines around you because you live in a state or live around an airport that doesn't really offer the service there. What can you do to save money? Because that those interview flights are gonna start racking up. What you can do is, which, which is something that I personally did, is look at your closest airport that you're going to be taking most of your trips on. Then look at the airline that most free, has the most frequent flights to and from there. So in Atlanta, our hub airline is Delta. Delta goes everywhere. It comes from everywhere. Delta even does international flights from Atlanta. So you've singled out the airline that is most common and has the most flights in your area. What you do is go onto their website and check if they have any flyer rewards programs because this is where you can save tons and tons of money on your flights. So let me actually give you an example. So Delta, and I know United also has a frequent flyer program and maybe even American Airlines and JetBlue definitely does. But Delta has this program called the Sky Miles Gold Card. So every dollar you spend with that card, you will accrue one mile. Generally, a round trip can cost you between 15 to 25,000 miles. That's a lot of money to spend in order to accrue that many round trips. But think about it. If you use that card for every single one of your purchases throughout the year and you pay that card off, like if you manage your money wisely and you pay that card off at every single statement, you'll be accruing thousands and thousands of miles. And you can also watch out for special promotional deals. Sometimes Delta, especially around the fall, they offer a promotional deal where if you spend $1,000 within the first month or three months, you get 60,000 miles and you can't even boost it up to 80,000 miles. That's like four to six round trips all paid for for free just for signing up for that card and using it for your expenditures. So let me give you an idea. The average medical student goes to around three interviews to get one acceptance, correct? So if you do the Delta Rewards program and do the promotional offer and you get six round trips, four to six round trips, you can basically have the average number of interviews that most acceptance students go to fully covered for. So yeah, it's definitely a really awesome, awesome way to save money. You just need to be very careful. You just need to look out for deals like this and you guys can save a ton of money, ton of money doing long distance 
flights. So let's talk about local transportation. Transportation when you're in the city and you have to travel within the city. Now, if you're one of the few lucky non-trads that are over the ages of 26, 27, you guys can rent a car for a super, super duper cheap price and use that car to get around town. You guys are extremely lucky. Unluckily, people like me who are under that age and have to pay tremendously large prices to rent cars, I really don't have that option. So what can people who are under the age of renting a car what can they do? So the first thing you can do is if you live, if you're in a large metropolitan area, look into the public transportation there. Public transportation is the number one way to save money around town. If you're in DC, LA, even Atlanta, downtown Atlanta has a has pretty okay transportation system. Definitely in New York City. So if you're in any one of those big cities, going to an interview there you can use public transportation and get around. If you're not in any one of those lucky locations, you can do rideshare. Rideshare is usually much, much cheaper than taxi service. And some cities have Uber pool where you get into the car and there's a bunch of other strangers who are using the pool service and he drops you off, the driver drops you off sequentially. Now, a lot of people are not comfortable with that, but you do get to save a lot more money. But if you're not comfortable with Uber Pool, you can always use Uber X, which is slightly more expensive, but still much, much cheaper than using taxi cab. It's time to talk about lodging. So for lodging, it's really simple. Use those hotel slash other booking websites to find the best deals around town. You want to go book somewhere that is safe, somewhere that you feel comfortable, somewhere that you'll get a good night's rest, but at the same time saving money. And also look out for those special deals that some hotel um, booking websites actually have. Other than that, if you want something much more cheaper than hotels, you got Airbnb on your side. Airbnb is the best way to save on lodging. However, I personally didn't use Airbnb because of the fact that I wanted more flexibility. I wanted to have the freedom to go out, come back in whenever I please. And I know some Airbnbs do offer that, but they are few and limited and I didn't have the time to look those up. But if you do have the time, make use of that. Airbnb is going to be much cheaper than a hotel. But for me, I never went on to the five star hotels or anything like that. I use the simple, bedroom hotels make sure it has a fridge and a microwave because there's a way you can save even more money with that configuration so by adding that little tidbit about making sure to have a fridge and a microwave we're gonna zoom right into talking about food because this is where a lot of people end up spending a ton of unnecessary money on so what i strategically do when i schedule my bookings is that i make sure it's at a hotel or motel near a grocery store why do you ask because i don't have to spend money at restaurants for food so the average cost of let's say a meal at a restaurant is around 10 to 15 dollars if you don't use fast food fast food is incredibly incredibly junky and not good for you so i don't even recommend going fat going to fast food to save money on it there's tons of other ways you can save money on food and my recommendation is of course going to a place that has a fridge and a microwave because just go to that grocery store nearby go in there buy some frozen meals that are healthy come back in what you only spend 12 bucks on your meals also with lodging only stay the necessary amount of days that you need to stay Generally, I stay the day before and the day of the interview and I fly back home. A lot of people like to stay a couple of extra days, but you're going to be accruing more and more money to pay if you stay for longer days. So that's it. That's my advice on how to make the most bang for your buck when you're out going on interviews. This way you can save hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I hope these tips have helped you guys. If you guys have any other tips, people who have already gone interviews, comment down below and I'll be... I'll be sure to include it in the description box later. Good luck, do your best, and you guys can make it. Love you.